morning. Please be seated. Y'all know how to make a girl feel very loved. I mean, my God. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. Is that the song? In such a special way. And yes, I'll praise you. I'll lift you up. And I'll magnify your name. <laughs> That's why. Don't you love a house that praises God? I'm going to tell you, I love my church. I love my church. I love the prayer here. Man, that thing kind of is still ringing in us, isn't it? <laughs> I love the prayer here. I love the worship. I love that we don't just gather and sing songs about God. I love that we actually gather and we sing to God. It's a huge difference, isn't it? Because if you just gather and sing songs about God and you hear stuff about God, but you never really encounter God, it's almost like going to a funeral service for Jesus. Jesus was a very good man, you know? You hear a eulogy about Jesus and you go home. You just celebrate the death, but we serve a living God. And not only is he alive, he's alive in you. I so I just, yes! Something on the inside of you is alive and well, regardless of how you feel. The, the Spirit of God on the inside of you is alive and well. You might have a headache, but the Spirit of God on the inside of you is alive and well. <laughs> you may have a bad attitude, but God is full of joy on the inside of you. <laughs> so you just got to decide which one of you is going to reign today. What am I, which is, <laughs> which one of you is going to reign today? And let me say this, I love my pastor. Come on, what's not to love? I love my pastors. What's not to love? I mean, first of all, he's the swaggiest guy. And he's a real person. And if you knew my history, this story will make sense. I told him, you know, I've served in ministry, worked in ministry almost 30 years. I started when I was two. Right? Almost 30 years. And so for the first time middle of July last year, or the end of July last year, for the first time in 20 years, I found myself not working at church, like not working at a church. And I told him, I said, I'm going to come to All Nations South. I love the campus. I love the word there. I feel like it's a place I can come and just eat, you know, not necessarily have to, you know what I mean? You know how you, when you feel like, oh, that was 30 years. I mean, that was 20 years of working at church. And uh, I said, I'm going to bring my mama. My mama's here. Y'all know uh, Mother Bernice. So I'm going to bring, bring my mama, and um, uh, I'm just, I just, just need to come to church. And he said, how can I pastor you? I cried. I had no clue. I said, I don't know. Isn't that interesting? Because you're, when you're just accustomed to coming to work, you, it's, it can be a challenge. And so just that level of sensitivity to even ask that question and then I said, you know, I want to serve. I want to be a strength to you. I know what I bring to the table. Come on, women. It is no shame in knowing what you do well. We easily admit what we don't do well. So on, come on, know what your strength is, and then bring your strength to the Lord and submit it to him as an offering, and then freely let him activate it in the house. Because if you can do it here, you'll do it out there. So I said, I want to serve. I know what I bring to the table. And he's made room for me even to serve, not in this. This is just me being obedient, but really being able to serve uh, as a pastoral help and serve with leaders. And so I just so honor uh, his heart. And so today what we're going to do, how many of you follow Pastor Josh on social media? Okay, good. If you don't, what you waiting on? Unless you're just not on social media. And I get that. I get that a lot. But um, so he posted something about being able to lean with the, the rider. Did y'all see that? So what it did is it really, when he asked me to preach today, I had an immediate thought that the Lord said, preach on practice, practical faith. Is, and so I'm, very, I'm a trainer, so you're going to feel like you're in a training. Is that okay? All right, so my, my natural bend, what I do all the time is I train leaders. And the greatest thing you can train a leader to do is how to think. Put your hand right here. And say, I'm open to learning how to think like a kingdom citizen. 
And so I knew that the Lord said, you're going to teach, teach practical faith, how to activate this faith. And then when I saw, uh, when I came Wednesday night, I said, okay, I see where he's leaning. And then when I saw that post, I literally using the word lean, I said, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, let's do this. Because the, the, the greatest fear is that you got the wrong word. Any preachers in the house? Yeah, the hardest part is just getting there, making sure, do I have the right word? Do I have the right word? And so uh, what, I have had that experience of riding on a bike with someone, riding on a motorcycle, and you get on the motorcycle, and, of course, you know, they lean into the curve. Any, any bike riders in the house? Oh, cool things. So, son, you ride a bike? Don't do that. It's dangerous. No, anyway. <laughs> This is my spiritual son. I'm like, what? So you, you lean. And so the temptation is, if you feel yourself falling this way, the temptation is to go that way. Because we have a natural desire for balance. But there are times, particularly if you're going to walk by faith, that, and I'm a balanced woman, don't get me wrong. I have a little workaholism. I'm working on it. But I try to live a balanced life. But there are times when you're walking by faith, when the, the Lord starts to bring you in a, in a spot, you got to go all in. Say all in. all in. And so I've had that experience. And this guy, his name is, I think, what's his last name? Ray Romero's a Hispanic guy. He's on this motorcycle. And he's, the bike feels like it's going to fall, so I'm trying to help him. Who ain't never rode a bike. But I'm trying to help him that own the bike. And he's saying, sis, lean with the bike, Right? You're going to make me crash. Well, I'm just trying to be balanced because this don't make sense. How many of you know that sometimes walking by faith doesn't make sense? And you step out on the word of the Lord, which is indeed walking by faith, and people all around you will say, you're crazy. You need to get some balance in your life. Everything with you is Jesus. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, Jesus in the afternoon. I asked you, how you doing? I said, I'm doing so great. I'm so thankful to God. Everything is God with you. You need to get some balance. And now, I'm not talking about eating a balanced meal or balancing your time. I'm not trying to get you to be extreme people, but I'm trying to tell you that even in the social media post, there's a word of the Lord from our, from our leader. That you've got to go with the direction that God is leaning you. Does that make sense? So what I've been watching from him is I've been watching, and, and, and I, I can't help but do it, is see what he's building. And so my, from my very first time here, even before I became a partner here, what I saw is that this is a man who wants to build the kingdom in the people. And I said to him, I see what you're doing. You're not building church. You're not building a ministry. You're building the kingdom in the people, and then you're going to let the people build the church. I'm like, yeah. He's like, if I take care of the people, God will deal with the ministry portion. Does that make sense to you? And so this is what I've been watching. And you tell me if you saw this. What I saw was first he's dealing with us about who Jesus is. Know who you're singing about. Know who you're worshiping. Know who you're reading about. We can never forget that message on the name. We'll never forget. If you hear it for the first time, go find it. You'll never forget that message on the name. Then he began to take us of who we are in Jesus. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Remember that? Then he began to take us about the power and authority we have. Those are two different things. Power is my ability to do. Authority is my permission to do it. I got plenty of power. But roll up on me with no authority, we're going to have a problem. You got plenty of power. But roll up in my house with no authority, you're going to need an ambulance. Right? So what God has given you as a believer is both power and permission. You, so he's been dealing with us about that and those keys if you were here Wednesday night. So I began to deal with the Lord, and the Lord was dealing with me. He said the next step for the partners of Anwa South is they're going to have to do something. Say, take action. We've been feeding you. No, we didn't we. God's been feeding us, <laughs> teaching us, reshaping us. 
There's coming a season for us as a people, but in, in, as individuals, as individual people, as individual believers, as individual kingdom citizens, where God is getting ready, and I say this prophetically, to push you into stepping out on faith. There are going to be opportunities open to you. There's going to be conversations open to you that will require faith to to access it. Faith will not be an option. Like, if I do this, it's going to be truly on God, just on his word. It's going to be that nevertheless at your word moment coming to you. Just receive it like I'm prophesying to you at the altar, all right? Just receive it. Just like I'm speaking to just you. You You're the only one in the room, me and you, okay? There's coming to you opportunity, access, entrance, gains, promotion that's going to require you to hear, obey, and then see it manifest. Does that make sense? So I feel like my responsibility today is to work through God's word, to, ha- to teach us on the reality and the practicality of faith. Does that make sense to you? If you are a note taker, you're going to love me today. If you're not a note taker, you're going to watch it again on Monday. Because, you know, they normally tell you when you teach and preach, have three points. I have seven. Unconventional. But I'm going to do it beca- because our pastor tells us that we are smart people. You see, oh, you see what I'm looking for? Oh, that's where it is. Y'all got like the Batman thing happening. Thank you so much. All right, you ready? Okay, thank you so much. You helped me out. That, the music helps the nerves just flow right out of you. All right, so let's, here we go. Number one, faith governs how we see our world and move forward in our lives. We're just going to walk through this, okay? Lots of scriptures for you. Faith governs how we see our world and how we move with our lives. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, y'all know this, y'all know this, y'all know this, says we walk by and not by. Now, I want to read to you what the Amplified Bible says when it has to do with walking. It says we regulate our lives, meaning what you do regularly is based on what you believe about God. I just let it sit. Yeah. What you, we regulate our lives and we conduct ourselves by our conviction or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things with trust and holy fervor, thus we walk. So when we're talking about we walk by faith, we, you know, we say it all the time, we sing it. We walk by faith and not by sight. There's an old choir song. If you never knew a robe, you don't know this song, right? You had to wear a robe to sing that song, right? <laughs> That's a choir marching in song, right? We walk by faith and not by sight. But what is, how does that apply to your life literally? And, and, and not even literally. Let me say this. How does that apply to your life practically? Because the Lord has made investment after investment after investment in us, and he's a smart businessman. He's not putting all of this in you just so you can have it. He's putting this in you to prepare you to take your mountain, to succeed in your assignment, to have a better life. And so here's here's an example. Um, There's two ways to walk. We know this by the word we just read. You walk according to what you see, or you're going to walk according to what we know. Say what I know. The disadvantage of walking according to what you see is that you don't see with your eyes, you see through them. And so you're, what you, when you look at someone or you look at a situation or you look at a thing, you're looking at it through your history. You're looking at it through your pain. You're looking at it even through your success. You're looking at it through your DNA. So if you're an insecure person and you look at someone frowning, you think you're looking at an enemy. But if you know that you're sent as an answer and you come in Jesus' name, you look at someone who's frowning and you see someone who needs your help. See what I mean? This is about when we walk by faith, we don't make assumptions based on what we see. 
And we don't regulate and move forward with our life based on how things look to us. Because I know I'm not looking with my eyes, I'm looking through them. And for the Bible says, for this cause was the Son of Man manifested. For this cause was Jesus made flesh, that he would undo the works of the devil. God forbid we think that we've been born and lived and come to this point without any demonic damage. God forbid that we think that we're just fine and that we don't need healing, correction, ministry, deliverance, guidance. My mother just had, can I talk about you a little bit? She ain't got no choice now, huh? She said, you up there now, I'll, I'll rebuke you later. <laughs> My mother just had surgery done on her eye. And so what happens is, the, the good thing is it takes an eye doctor to tell you that you're not seeing right. You see me? You with me? Who with me? He said, come on, that, I'm, I'm with you, Pastor. I'm going to preach just to you, man. <laughs> so the doctor says, you're not seeing right. And then we're going to do, we're going to give you a new lens she walking around with a new lens the first thing she said was oh it's so bright <laughs> it's so much brighter there's so much light and because the light has entered in your word brings light the entrance of your word brings light y'all with me because the light has come in now I can see the places that need to be cleaned up so I saw the dust on the blinds in the kitchen I wasn't gonna say nothing because I wasn't ready to clean them now she walks up and says, oh, look at this on, this, this, on this, these blinds in the kitchen. You don't see, you're already with me, you're already there. <laughs> She's like, that's right. You don't see the parts of you that need to be cleaned up. And then you get insulted when someone says, let me, let me get that for you. Then we get religious. You better get the plank out your eye, baby. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Right? So when the entrance of your word brings light, now I can begin to see some things. So, so walking by faith will begin with what I see and how I see it. Even about me first. Do this. Say me first. Me first. Me first. Woo. Hallelujah. Move, move on. Here we go. There's a story in 2 Kings 6. I won't tell the whole story, but there's a story in 2 Kings 6 where I love prophets. I find myself surrounded by them very often. I have one with me here today. So, I, so there's a story of a prophet who had been telling the king of Israel what the king of Syria was up to. So the king of Syria was like, who's in my camp that's telling? They said, it ain't none of us. We're, none of us are traitors. No snitches. We know they get stitches. What, what, it's really the prophet in Israel, right? Because he was about to hack his people up, right? So they, he said, it's the prophet in Israel. They're telling. So he sent the Syrian army to surround the prophet in Israel. They got up the morning. The prophet's servant goes outside. Y'all know this story, right? Prophet's servant goes outside. They are surrounded, surrounded by the Syrian army. Come to, they didn't come for tea. They came to kill us. And so he comes in, he says, oh, my Lord, what are we going to do? And he says, oh, first thing he says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Then he says, then he tells them why. Many times God will get a grip on your emotions, and then he'll tell you why. Don't be afraid. Get a, get a grip on yourself. Then he says there's more for us than there are against us. This makes no sense to my natural eye. Other one, come here. This makes no sense to our natural eye. He's the prophet, I'm the servant. Everybody stand up. Point your fingers at us like um, we, we're here to take y'all out. They're going to kill us. <laughs> I see them coming to get us. He says, oh, don't fear. What do you mean don't fear? Punch your finger. Don't, what do you mean don't fear? The machine guns are about to go. He says, there's more for us than there are. There's more for us than there are for, I, but I don't see it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stay scared because I don't see it. Because I walk by sight. 
You can gauge how you're walking by what happens in your emotions when things happen in your life. You open the bill and your stomach drops, you're walking by sight. Because you say you know he's a provider, but you ain't walking by what you know because your emotions are all over the place. Does that make sense? Have a seat. So what I love about what the prophet does is, the prophet says, God, open his eyes so he can see. Now, why do you think he needed to have his eyes open? Because he was walking by sight. He didn't, it, nowhere, I searched this, it doesn't say that the prophet saw the angelic host. He didn't say, God, open his eyes so he can see what I see. He said, God, open his eyes so he can see what I already know. I already know there's not an enemy made that can take me out. I already know this is not my time to die. I already know you said you'd never leave me nor forsake me. So I don't have to see it. I walk by what I know. So he says to the servant, he says to God, open his eyes so he can see. I looked and looked. I don't see where it says the prophet saw it. He said the Lord did a miracle for the servant so the servant could see. And he saw the angels and the mountain and the sky all around them. Say, listen, lift your hands. Say, Father, Father I'm, committed I'm committed to walking by what I know, whether I see it or whether I don't. I don't have to see the angels. I know they're there. Come on, drop your hands. Give God praise. He's increasing your faith even in this moment. He's increasing your faith even in this moment. Whew. Hallelujah. Don't be, a, don't be afraid. Je Je Jesus said to Thomas, I believe, when he said, I, I won't believe he's resurrected till I can see the, you know, put my hand in. And so he says, Thomas, here, you got to touch it. Now you're walking by your feelings, talking about walking by your senses. So he says, I, 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 won't, I won't believe it until I can touch it. Thomas does that. Jesus says to him, Blessed are those who believe who haven't seen. Come on, you're blessed. Come on, you're blessed. You're empowered to prosper because I don't need to see it. I know what I know. I don't need to see it. I know what I know. I don't need to see it. I know what I know. Come on. Amen? I'm going to give you one more practical example of this because I got six more. I got to move on. 20-some years ago, I hosted a, I arranged a birthday party for my then pastor, and he really loved George Bush. He really did. And so we had an actor come who looked just like George Bush. And it was Bush number two. And this guy had Hollywood Oscar-winning prosthetics put on his face. And the, I mean, he looked so much like him that when he arrived at the McCormick place, or whatever place we were, when he arrived at the place, the security called me and said, you have to come and get this guy. He's, he's, he's drawing a crowd. It's becoming a security issue because he looked just that much like him and could imitate his voice perfectly. I know the guy's not George Bush. I hired the guy. You have to come right now. Yeah, it's okay. It's not him. No, you have to. It's, people think it's him. I get in the elevator. I come all the way down. I'm suited, I'm booted, I'm the executive in charge. Let me just go and get this gentleman, you know, these people. <laughs> I get there, I walk up to the man, and I said, Mr. President. <laughs> my brain, my eyes took over my brain. I knew it, I arranged it, I paid the man. I booked the man. You, we run around here, I know what I know. I know he's the greatest. I know there's none like him. I know that he's faithful. He never lies. I know that he's with me. And then something happened and your eyes shut off your faith. And you're like, why have you forsaken me? I said I'll never leave you. Who are you talking to? Do not let your eyes shut down 
your faith in this season. It can happen in a moment, like turning off a light switch. And then you look around and say, wait a minute, where's my, let me, get, let me go back and get my faith. But seriously, you have a moment, you flip out on God, you go, wait, 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 wait. let me go to YouTube. What, what, what did pastor say? <laughs> let me find that scripture. Where are my notes? Let me go back and pick up my faith. I'm not walking into battle with no sword and no shield. Here's number two. Whew. Faith begins when you're born again. So if you're wondering, where do I get this faith? My God, it sounds so good. <laughs> it, helps me to, it helps me to move forward with God. It helps me not to be tricked by the devil, the, ma the magician, the trickster, right? It helps me. But where do I get it? Baby, you got it. Come on, look at somebody next to you. Tap them on the shoulder. Say, honey, you already got it. You already got it. You already got it. But what you need to do is you need to work it. What you need to do is you need to work it. When you were born again like a baby born, you had all the, you had all the faith muscles you need. <laughs> the, <laughs> but you're flabby. Let's try not to say it. Y'all see me try, to, try not to say it? Because I like people to like me. I just got to get over it. If you're going to be a real preacher, you got to don't care what people like you. But I hear the Lord say, because some of us are flabby. Because we don't work our faith. It's flabby faith. It's flabby faith. Because I'm not working it. I'm doing anything, everything within my power. And I'm not, at, I'm not partnering with God for God power. So there's no faith involved in my everyday life. There's no faith involved. You're like, well, I went to bed last night and I woke up. That's my faith. No, you didn't. Come on. Let's be real. That's low-level faith. <laughs> you don't need more. You need to increase what you have. Don't need any more. You got to increase the faith that you have. And it's going to come to you by reason of use. Let me tell you, don't wait for a crisis to decide I'm going to increase my faith. I'm going to give you permission to start real small. I mean, just begin. I'm just going to ask the Lord for one thing. And it, it's, it don't have to be nothing, life or death. But I'm just going to begin to ask God, God, I would really like, Lord, I really believe you for. And because sometimes we've been trained to believe that God only shows up uh, when it's an emergency, when it's life or death, like he's a fireman or something. But what he wants is to give you that John 10, 10 life. He wants you to have life to the full till it's overflowing in abundance, right? And so he knows, Lord, I want to learn how to partner with you to see manifestation in my life. And so if you're afraid to start with something big or embarrassing, hey, I get it. I'm with you. I'm with you. Start with something small. And begin to find what he says about it in his word and say, I'm going to lift this word every day and I'm going to declare this over my life every day until my faith muscle is built. And when God comes through for you once, you'll know he'll come through for me again. You got it. You just need to work it. Number three, through faith, we train and renew our minds in order to fulfill our destiny. As we build our faith, you're training and you're renewing your mind in order to fulfill your destiny. People are searching. The number one question on go that people Google is, what is the meaning of life? Yeah. People want to know why they're here. And we do too. The difference between them and us is we're asking the right person. We're asking the one who's got the answers. And so your faith, through faith, Romans 12 and 2, we're not conformed to this world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can prove why we're here. The story that God has written for and about you is starring the real you. But the real you is a man of faith. And the real you is a woman of faith. This is a challenge even to me, I'm telling you. There, like, the idea, it's not the walking on water. It's the feeling of being afraid while you walk on water. Fear is a torment. 
and it attacks your mind. And so when you step out and do what God's called you to do, the fear, heart beats, mouth goes dry, hands get sweaty. But here's the deal. When you do it anyway, what happens is the next time God calls you to step out on faith, say something to somebody, invite somebody to church, uh, put a bid in for that, that job you want for your business, submit your resume for something. Well, the next time God asks you to do something, you'll do it with less and less fear. Because now your mind is being renewed and strengthened. You can walk by what you know. You with me? Hallelujah. <laughs> Say, I need faith so I can fulfill my destiny. We're going to prove what the will of God is concerning you. I tell people all the time, I love deliverance. It's like probably one of my favorite things. Yeah, yours too? Yeah, probably one of my favorite things. And I'd be doing leadership training, developing people to lead themselves and others, and people would start, like, screaming out. Like, what happened? <laughs> like, how is this? I asked my apostle. He said, oh, you, you can't train over devils. He said, you, you got to stop, get people free, and then go back to renewing the mind. Because as you're renewing the mind, you get resistance. As you're renewing the mind, you ever, you ever had somebody say something to you that part of you felt was true, but the other part of you, you were flat out insulted? Well, dang, you ain't got to say it like that, right? <laughs> Don't walk away from that. Think about Jesus and the rich young ruler. Jesus was, was uh, just, just traveling with his people, and it was a guy who was rich, young, and in charge. My kind of people, hmm? my kind of people. And he comes up to Jesus and he says, you know, what, what do I do to inherit eternal life? And the Lord tells him what to do. You know the law. And he says, yeah, I do all that. But he knew that there was more for him. You ever feel that? I feel like there's more for me. I got all the, the rules of Christianity. You don't sneak. So what they say, you don't smoke or chew or hang with those that do. You know, remember that kind of stuff? Like you get all the don'ts. Sometimes when you first get saved, you get all the don'ts. But you feel like there's got to be more than this thing than just a set of rules. And so that, I think that's how that guy was feeling. Like, I got the law, but where's the life? I, I'm a member of a church. I, I pay my tithes. I don't cheat on my wife. I, you know, I show up at work every day. But where's the, where's the, you ever feel like there's more? I feel like this is how that guy was. And he knew it at a young age. And then the Lord gave him a hard thing to do that would require faith. And the Bible says he went away sad. Here's the, here's the challenge. When God challenges you to see something a different way, see your enemy a different way, see your debt a different way, see that sickness a different way, see your gift, your skill, your career a different way. And if you say, I won't, you're going to end up going away sad. It's a, you're going to wrestle with it for a minute. But if you allow the, the Lord to renew your mind, you'll live in greater joy. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? All right, number four. Faith brings you to a new level of understanding. It's going to bring us to a new level of understanding. Hebrews 11 and 3. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. And we now see, and what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Revelation comes for as you receive the word of God in faith, revelation and understanding will be your portion. This is what I mean. This is like, how does this work practically? I have seen my mother sewing, looking at a pattern made by the sewing expert people at Singer or whoever they are, looking at a pattern, looking at the fabric, and then decide there's a better way to do this. And she steps away and just walk a little bit. Right? Just walk a little bit. Then she says, oh, thank you, Lord, and comes back and does it. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, you have made me, made me wiser even than my instructors. Kingdom people, you are never at an intellectual loss. If there's something you don't know, 
You can ask the Lord to download it to you. Do I sound crazy yet? If I don't sound crazy yet, I'm not doing my job here. There, I'm not talking about, you, you don't get a doctorate degree by faith. You got to do the work. But what I'm talking about is this. If you don't know who to trust, God will give you a level of understanding. Listen, I had to navigate last week between some dicey, I had to communicate in a way, and, and, I'm, and I'm, a, I'm a little bit of an assertive woman. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little, and that's okay. God makes us all differently. He made me what he, I needed to be to fulfill my destiny, right? And so what I wanted to do was say, hey, look, this is what it is, and this is how you're going to straighten no chaser, brother. <laughs> can be a pretty straight shooter, all in love and full of joy, <laughs> right? This is what it is. And the Lord said, wait, hold up, hold up. Write it like this. Write the email like this. And say the words like this. And you'll have no problem with this leader. I had to humble myself. Because see, sometimes we think, we don't want to walk by faith. That's what I, <laughs> I, I don't want to do it your way. I want to let them know. But a greater understanding. You can't have a high ego and high wisdom at the same time. One of them's going to have to bow. So do you want the wisdom of God or do you want your ego? Put the ego down and let God show you how to navigate. Get in. Get the yes that you need and get right back out. I, and he said, he said to me, I was, you know how you feel like, but I, he said, I'm going to show you my example. Here's, the, here's Jesus in the home of some Pharisees, and here's a lady, an outsider, who needs a miracle. She needs a yes from Jesus. She didn't really even need Jesus. He was in his, he was the, she didn't need the carpenter. She just needed the anointing from the Messiah. She comes in. they saying all kinds of things about her. She's like, hey, my daughter is sick. I just need you to heal her. He says, well, I can't even get you. First of all, I'm not even sent to you. You're not even a, 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 a Hebrew. And, second, and then says, you know, we can't give what's for the children to the dogs. So the Israelites called the Gentiles dogs. And so he's using that language to her. She put her ego down and said, well, you know. Um, Woof. She took the high road. Let me tell you, you can get high by taking the low road. Call me what you want. Call me what you want. But even the dogs get the crumbs. I know how powerful you are. I'm not here to be liked. God helped her navigate. She navigated through that thing. He said, go, go ahead, lady. <laughs> You're not even going to flex. You're not going to flex, not even for the gram. You're not going to flex. He said, go ahead, lady. Take, it, take the miracle. <laughs> She said, thank you very much. I said, I, just, I, was, I was saying to a friend of mine, I said, that lady could have been in there looking so raggedy and pitiful. And then she came out, put her MAC lipstick back on, got in her BMW, and drove home to her healed daughter. If God could tell a man how to build an ark who had never seen rain, he can tell you how to navigate those people at your job. He can tell you how to deal with that wife when she's upset. The wisdom of God is your portion at work. The wisdom of God will help you navigate to get the best price for your car. I'm talking about practical faith. Faith has raised your understanding. You say, God, what is going on in here? He'll tell you, oh, that person has an agenda. This person has a sick child. This person, you say, okay, mm-hmm, all right. Okay, I know how to deal with this. Thank you, Lord. I'm a kingdom citizen. 
I don't live by trial and error. Come on. He navigate me. Show me how to deal with this. It's a lot going on in this room, Lord. It's a lot going on in this room. I'm showing up because it's a work event. I don't even drink like this. I'm showing up. Show me who to talk to. Show me how to navigate. Tell me when to leave. Tell me when not to be here. Tell me when the stuff's gonna go down. Tell me. Expand my understanding. Hallelujah. Brings me to a new level. God can show you how to pay off your house. He told Peter, Peter had those taxes. He said, listen, just go throw one line. Have you ever had him just tell you to do something so odd? Throw one line. Pull out the first fish. Open his mouth. Get the money. Pay your taxes. Don't ever go into prayer without a notebook. Instructions are coming to you. Don't ever go into prayer without a notebook. Because we're a house of miracles. Don't ever go into prayer without miracles come through obedience. Obedience comes through hearing. How do you obey if you can't get no instructions? We're getting the principles. He's building the kingdom in us. He's building Christ in us, the hope of glory. Sin is childish. We're not dealing with sin. I'm talking about instructions that help you navigate your way through life, live that John 10, 10 life, make you the salt of the earth, and cause you to be a magnet for every miserable unbeliever in your world. The increase of his kingdom, there'll be no end. Hallelujah. Is this too much? We all right? Where, are we? Where am I? Number four? Mm. Number five. Y'all are a good class. <laughs> Faith is sustained through relationship with God. Faith is sustained. You know, you can have, you ever have a moment of faith? <laughs> like, ooh, I don't know what came over me. <laughs> I just stood up to that bully. Like, I don't know what came over me. Or you feel faith rise in you for a moment. And then you do something amazing. And then you shrink and you feel like, like, man, I felt like the giant for the minute. Now I'm like, ooh, God, that was all you, <laughs> right? But, but you can live at that level of casting not away, away your confidence. You can live at that level through a sustained relationship with God. You can live at that level of knowing he's always with me. And so it's not a matter of I'm having moments of greatness. That's Old, that's old Testament. That's old agreement. And the old agreement, the spirit of the Lord would come upon people. They would do phenomenal things, and then it would lift. But say he's living now. Right? So now you've got it in you all the time. The faith that you have will be sustained through relationships. Isaiah 55 and 8 says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. <laughs> That's right. Listen, I've been, I've, been, I've been walking with God for about, I don't know, how old is my young, my oldest child is 29, so about 30 some years. And sometimes you can kind of really think you understand him. And I'm going to give you this scripture because I love this scripture. And, it, and, I, and I declare this scripture over my life on a regular. But there's, there's a scripture that says that he showed. Here, I'm going to just give it to you now. It's in Psalms 103 and 7. It says, he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the son of Israel. His ways to Moses and his acts to the son of Israel. If you watch me long enough, you'll know my ways. You'll, or you'll know what I did do. But if you have relationship with me, you can predict what I will do. Does that make sense? You can watch, they, the children of Israel watched God and they saw his acts. So they had a testimony of what God did do. But he said he made his ways known to Moses. Your ways are, it's your regular, it's your MO, it's your character. Your character is what you do when everybody's looking and when nobody's looking, right? 
So he made known his ways to Moses. If you know me, you can pretty much predict what I'm going to do. And so your relationship with God is going to give you more than just a testimony of the past. It's going to give you hope for the future. If you have faith, you, you know, you can gain faith. We need our testimony. We, we overcome by our testimony. But you take that testimony, how do you overcome? I take that testimony because the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So I take what he did, and then I declare what he will do. It's not just I overcome by the word of my testimony, meaning I just keep testifying and I'm going to overcome. No, 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 no. You take that testimony and you say, because he did this, what did I learn about him? Even in your Bible reading, you're not just reading the Bible to know the Bible. You're reading the Bible to know the author. Get it? We're going to, because we walk by faith. You're going to read the Bible so I can know the ways of God. You want to know the character of God. So what happens is as he's moving, you're moving with him. You say, oh, yeah, this feels like the uh, setup from the Lord. <laughs> Why? Because this is how he's dealt with me before. You don't come out of a testimony saying, I made it out. I made it, made it, made it. Right? You're just happy to be out. But what did you bring out with you? Remember, the names of God from the old agreement, the old covenant, were birthed out of testimony. You got it? So that's why they know he's Jira because he provided. That's how they know he's Rafa because he healed. What do you know because of what he's done for you? The testimony is the spirit of prophecy. I can show you my scars and tell you he'll heal me. Sometimes I pause. I'm not waiting on you. I'm waiting on me to calm down. <laughs> the, the sustain, I want a relationship. I want to know your ways. Teach me how you think. Let me know how you feel about a subject before I put my opinion on it. Let me not cast judgment on a person before I see how you see them. I'm, 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 let, let me know how, to, how, how, how I can relate to a situation. How would you do this? I need a, relate, a sustained relationship so then I'm just not a knowledge thief. To say, just, uh, just give me, uh, just show me this, show me how to do that, show me how to do this. I got it from here. There's so much pride in that. Just give me the combination. I'll work the lock. I'll get in. I can take it from here. Have a seat, Jehovah. You know? There's so much pride in that. Like, I really don't want a relationship. I just want the goodies. Come on, ladies. We've dealt with that. If we don't like it, God doesn't either. I just need you to help me. I just need you to give me what I need today. And I just I don't want to really spend time with you, hang out with you, and pray about your agenda. <laughs> I just can't give you my agenda. Amen? Amen? It's easier to follow someone you know. It's easier to trust someone you know. Come on, put your hand over your heart. God, I want to know you. Teach me your ways. And show me how to use my testimony to prophesy to my future. My God, I'm, in, I'm so in love with y'all. I feel such agreement. I feel such agreement. I feel such agreement in the house. This really is the culture of Anwa South. Like y'all agree with each other and for each other very quickly. I, I'm in and out of a lot of churches with my work. Y'all agree with each other and for each other very quickly. You agree with God with each other and for each other very quickly in this house and you need to treasure that and you need to you need to make it a standard Just like 30 seconds of culture training for you but you really do it's a precious thing where you can come across this church and say hey brother can you agree with me yes I'll agree with you like y'all agree with each other you agree with God 
for each other and with each other very quickly here. And this is why the Lord has told our, our pastor it will be a house of miracles because there's very quick agreement with God. I don't have to fully understand him to agree with him. I just got to know him. Would you tell your children, come on, get in the car, and they say, where are we going? I'm going to tell you when you get in the car. <laughs> Sometimes the, the amount of time, the fact that it's so far above, the amount of time that it takes, if you won't move until you fully understand God, you won't move. Sometimes I'll ask the Lord, you get to the other end, and then you understand it. And you, know, you used to hear the, the old saying say, I'll understand it better by and by. And I would say, I want to understand it now. Your problem is, Pam, you want to know everything. But you got it. that ain't even the real problem. The symptom is you want to know everything. The problem is you want to protect yourself. And you have a God for that. And so we break down every idolatrous self-protection in the name of Jesus. And we declare that we put our trust in God. And we're not going to worship a God we don't trust. We're not going to praise a God we don't trust. We're not going to be two-faced and trust him in the sanctuary and then not trust him at home. That our relationship with him has integrity. We declare that over ourselves now in Jesus' name. And every hurt and every pain, everything that's happened to you in your past that's caused you to think you got to be your own God. We release healing to you now in Jesus' name. Every situation where you felt unprotected, you felt God abandon you, and you've said, where is God? And you've pressed past it just to be loyal. You've pressed past it just to be loyal. But a part of you feels like, I'll take care of myself. The Lord has come to deliver you from that. He's come to bring you freedom from that. And he'll make it make sense. And he'll make you a warrior over that thing. And you'll be a champion in that thing. And the fact that it didn't kill you proves that he did not leave you. You'll find your calling in that thing. You'll find your power in that thing. That it didn't take you out. And now you have an understanding and he'll turn the weapons of the enemy and put them in your hands. David took Goliath's head with Goliath's sword. I said he used Goliath's sword. And you'll take the sword of that giant that came for you. That moment when you felt abandoned, broken, not protected. Where is your shield? Where were you in that moment? He'll take that, and you're going to be the deliverer for others. Come on, give God praise for that. <laughs> Hallelujah! You're faithful when we don't understand it. You're still God when we can't see you. His character is stable. He can be trusted. Woo. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just let it sink in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. give you these last two and we're going to go home. My clock stopped. Am I, does that mean I'm out of time? <laughs> Here we go. Here, last two. Faith comes from a hearing heart. A hearing heart. You have to follow what you hear God say in your heart. Faith, we know the Bible says Hebrews, right? Faith comes by hearing it's the substance, or rather, it's the substance of things that you don't see. 
It comes from a hearing heart. You, you have to have a heart to hear the voice of God. And when you do, you follow it. I need a hearing heart. One of my favorite things to do is teach people how to hear the voice of the Lord. I love it. I'm going to give you permission once again, start small. I remember it was over 25 years ago. I wanted to hear and be led by God so desperately. I felt like I had wrecked my own life and I was tired of bumping my head. I said, God, I need to hear you. Teach me how to hear you. He said, you hear, you don't recognize. You hear, you don't recognize. And let me tell you, it's a simple thing. I worked at the Girl Scout office, and every Tuesday, it was somebody's turn to bring donuts. I didn't remember if it was my turn or not. And I said, God, is it my turn? I went, to, I went to the store, and I was picking up the donuts, and I heard the voice of the Lord say, somebody else has, it is your turn, but somebody else has got the donuts. Simple, just going to walk, just practice, guys. Just practice, right? He said, it is your turn, but somebody else has got the donuts. They're at the office. I f you ever feel it like, is this God talking to me about donuts? Because we feel that he's going to train you on something major. He's too merciful for that. He's going to train you on the little things. And so because I wasn't sure if it was God, I bought them anyway. I hedged. I hedged. I said, I'm going to buy them, but I'm going to leave them in the car. <laughs> He's merciful. He's a teacher. You asked, I asked him, teach me how to recognize. So I bought them. And just in case I was wrong, I bought them. But just in case I was right, I put them in the car. I walked in the office. I go in the conference room, and there on the table, two dozen donuts. I begin to weep because I said, if I can hear you about donuts. You know, we, we read that scripture, he leads me through the valley. How does he lead you with that voice that we're going to recognize? We're being built. The kingdom is being built in us. For what? For advancement. For authority. To go to the rescue. You're being deployed in the world, but you got to know where to go and who to see and what to do. And you're going to do it by hearing and following the voice. And then lastly, I'll just say this. Faith is invisible, but it's not unreal. It is a real substance. All throughout the Bible, we hear the Lord say, your faith made you whole. Your faith has done this. It is a real force. It is a real substance. It's real. You need a hearing heart. When you get the hearing heart, you activate the reality of it. You good? Everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> Let it out. I want to pray. And then I specifically want to pray for you. This lady right here next to the bald gentleman with the beard, I want to pray for you, okay? Can you stand and watch Chicago South, my home church? <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah, huh? I'm so thankful to God that he didn't just come and give an example and then say, okay, I'm out. There's a leadership principle that I teach about don't give people responsibility without authority. And he's given us a responsibility to bring the kingdom to the whole, whole earth, but then he's also given you authority. <laughs> so I'm not going to leave you without a helper. And so you're going to activate the helper this week. You're going to hear. You're going to obey. And it's going to manifest. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? Say, I'm going to hear. It's going to, I'm going to obey. And it's going to manifest. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your sons and daughters. And I thank you for the wealth on the inside of them. I thank you for the rich inheritance that you've given each of them, Lord God. 
Father, I thank you that even this week, you're going to put a demand on the faith on the inside of them. I thank you for the faith muscles that are being built, Father. I thank you that they're indeed going to walk and move and regulate their life and move forward by that faith. I thank you that their faith is going to be stronger than ever because of what they know about you. And I thank you, Lord, that they have a hearing heart. They're not hard-hearted, no, but they have a hearing heart. And out of their heart will flow the issues of their life. I declare over them an enlargement of their life, that their life is getting bigger and their life is getting better. I release over them the blessing of God. I declare an apostolic blessing over them to go out and build the life that you've given them to have. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hey, listen, if you need some prayer, we're going to, I will be here with a couple of our elders. If you need some prayer, I I know, whoo, Jesus. If you need some prayer, just come to the altar. We'll pray for you. Those of you that need to go, have a phenomenal weekend or phenomenal week. And don't forget to stop by the connect table. Connect with us. Volunteer with us. Join this church, man. You're not going to find a better house than this. (laughs) God bless you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for receiving me.